Good afternoon to you, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is July 2nd, 2021, and we are keeping a close watch on Hurricane Elsa, strengthening Hurricane Elsa, surprising Elsa down in the southeastern Caribbean after going through the Windward Islands today, lashing Barbados, St. Lucia, and vicinity. I'll show you some video from there in just a moment. It is now strengthening. Top winds are 85 miles per hour, and the pressure down to 991 millibars, and that is very important. I'll show you why, more so than you can think, in just a minute. All right? First, let's take a look at a couple of uh, mentions here on Twitter. St. Lucia News now uh, tweeting at me earlier today. This is the view from Barbados. Let's mute that. The view from Barbados. Hey, it almost sounds like that outside my window here. It's raining and storming in Wilmington, where I am. But um, I you know, can't independently verify that this is from Barbados, so we will take their word for it. And that's just a standard disclaimer when you don't know for sure. It's not an indictment against St. Lucia News now for telling me that, hey, you've got some video I want to share with you. I just want you to know that I can't independently verify that this is where this came from. Nevertheless, that's pretty impressive. That's a hurricane for you down in the Barbados area in uh, the extreme eastern Caribbean and the Windward Islands. This from St. Lucia. Mute that. Look at those waves and the angry ocean down there. Uh, hurricane conditions, kind of a rough day, as you can imagine. And I talked about that, uh, that this could be the case if uh, Elsa comes over strengthening, and that's exactly what it did, then this is what you would see. You get much more pronounced conditions from a strengthening system, one that's on the upswing than one that is steady state or certainly one that is weakening. And the reason behind that is that deep thunderstorm activity, the convection, really helps to bring those winds down to the surface a lot more efficiently. We saw a lot of lightning inside this thing earlier today from the GLM lightning count that is embedded into the GO-16 satellite, an amazing tool. And all of that lightning shows you there's a lot of instability, a lot of thunderstorm activity down there very cold air in the upper levels of the atmosphere for the warm air to rise up into, become unstable, and create a lot of intense convection. And that word convection, the rising motion in thunderstorms that makes thunderstorms, that is the key to this whole thing. So let's see if there's any other ones. I knew there was one vertical video in here. I'll show it. I'm against vertical video because I'm a movie guy. But, hey, I appreciate that people are showing uh, what's happening down there. This also uh, from St. Lucia, so thanks a lot to the St. Lucia News Now Twitter site here letting me know, there they are, about uh, these videos. All right, so latest stats as of 2 o'clock, AST, same as Eastern Daylight Time, 85 miles per hour, that's kind of surprising, you got to admit, pressure down to 991, and this is huge right here, west-northwest at 29 miles per hour. It's embedded in these deep trade winds down here, just hauling the mail through the Caribbean, and yet it is still a formidable hurricane there at 85 miles per hour. That's telling you something, that if it can slow down and really gather itself, we're going to have some really big problems beyond what they've already had down in parts of the Windward Islands today. They've had some big problems down there, and uh, luckily things are going to improve, but this shows you how much potential I think there is for Elsa to cause problems as we go forward. All right, so let's do a couple of things here. Look at the satellite animation courtesy of Levi Cowan's website, tropicaltidbits.com. There's Elsa spinning away down in the Eastern Caribbean, fairly well-defined center of circulation, beautiful outflow in the upper levels of the atmosphere. I'll draw on that in the white color here. That's the clouds spinning away and the air being evacuated in a clockwise fashion, like this, that's clockwise. Meanwhile, at the surface, you've got this spiral inner core and all the feeder bands and the warm water down there. It's just this amazing piece of energy that nature produces. Unfortunately, when we are in its way, it becomes problematic. So uh, looking at a close-up of it here from the Weather Nerd site, still some lightning in some of the bands, There's Barbados. It'll start to improve there. You still have one band that just went through some strong southeasterly flow coming in there. But the center of Elsa, probably somewhere right in here just about now, moving off to the west-northwest with time. And anytime you see that lightning in there, that shows you there is intense upward motion going on, and it can lead to strengthening. 
and that is indeed what has happened today. The season's first hurricane, a surprising set of circumstances here. Now, let's talk about something really interesting as we go into the forecast as to what's going to happen going forward. Many of you probably already have seen the 12Z model runs, especially from the GFS and the Canadian and maybe the UK Met and some of the other 12Z guidance that's come out, the Euro probably coming out now too. And it was just like, wait, sorry, Elsa is not going to really be a problem. It was very weak. It didn't do much with it. And all this question, all these questions started popping up on message boards. I was reading over at Storm 2K all about it. Twitter, I was talking with some of my supporters and folks on the chat, you know, like, what, what the heck? You know, like, really? All of a sudden, everything is going to just abandon ship and take the weekend off, if you will. The models, the global models just didn't want to do anything. I mean, that's not how it works, but that's how it seemed, especially the GFS, which was consistent run after run after run. And remember, it's run four times a day, the GFS, and the Euro is now as well. And it's been very consistent on a, a steadily strengthening system, going through the Caribbean and then in, eventually impacting Florida, potentially as a hurricane. And so if that's going to happen, and the, and the guidance is suggesting that, you want to have faith in it. And so if it starts to waffle, that shakes your faith in the guidance, uh, because everybody can see the guidance. If everybody just paid attention to what the National Hurricane Center said, and your local TV meteorologist, and that was it, and we didn't have our own way to kind of look around the edges, so to speak, none of this sort of anxiety and guessing and wondering and head-scratching would ever take place. But we don't live in a world where everything's locked down in terms of all of this data. It's readily available. Tropical Tidbits, the NCEP site, it's free, you know, and there's weather service sites, weather service-oriented sites like Weather Models, uh, and Weatherbell, etc., that charge a fee to look at this stuff in higher resolution. The point is, we can all see it, but we all don't understand it. And sometimes, neither do I. And we try to figure it out together. So, all of that being said, sometimes you got to just look out there, I say this often, and see what the heck is going on in real time. Not the future, but real time. And what do we have? We have the wonderful men and women that fly these planes out there. There's a little plane and uh, uh, icon from Tropical Tidbits there from the Recon Track page. So they fly out there and they do just that. Don't literally open up the window, hopefully, but they tell us what's going on. So, what does Jack Sillen say about it? Jack's an up-and-coming meteorologist, currently out in Bozeman, Montana. I hope I didn't give that away. And you know, he's not in the witness protection program or anything, but he's normally for, from up in Maine. Uh, but he's out in Bozeman just chilling for the summer. Yet he can still tweet from anywhere on Earth, and as long as he's got a good connection. And here's what he is saying, Jack Sillen. All right, uh, Hurricane Hunter data shows a much better organized ELSA versus this morning's flight. Instead of an open wave at 700 millibars, that's a particular layer of the atmosphere right there, we have a fully closed circulation with 25 knot southwest winds. Instead of a 1,004 millibar pressure, that's what it was early this morning, the pressure is somewhere near 995 millibars. And as we know, because this tweet from Jack was, if it has a timestamp, from 1253, this is a while ago. We know it's actually down now to 991. And so this is very important. This is observation, in situ observation. You know, we can look at it from satellite and, you know, think about what we might think, you know, assume of what's going on based on past satellite presentations, or you can send planes out there and actually measure it, you know, stick your finger in it, so to speak, and measure it, and that's exactly what the recon has done, and we now know that it is a much more vertically stacked and organized hurricane. So, when I show you this, it starts to make more sense. This is the 12Z GFS, right there. And this is a different version of it that I've shown you. Usually I show you the level of the 850 millibar. Now I'm going to show you the average precip rate and the mean sea level pressure. Why? Because I want you to look right there. It's kind of hard to see, but that says 1002 millibars. When? 18Z. That's when it's valid for. What time is it right now? Look down there at my little clock. It's just a little bit past 2.32 p.m. So it's 1832Z. And wah, wah, wrong. 
it's about 11 millibars too weak in the GFS. It didn't get it right. You know, for whatever reason, the initialization and the forward progress of this was not correct. So everything else would also presumably be not correct. I say presumably, I don't know, but you would have to just, you know, logic would dictate that. So as we run this out, it looks feeble and just like whatever goes around. I mean, it's still having impacts, but certainly not a formidable hurricane. Comes in there at about 1,001 south of Cuba, goes over Cuba near the dry Tortugas, kind of displaced with the rain off to the east. 1,007, you know, maybe strengthens a little bit before coming up into the Big Bend uh, Wednesday afternoon. That is a far cry from the strong hurricane that it was indicating, the same model, uh, just 12 hours earlier. Why? Probably because of a bad initialization. I say that, I mean, I'm just speculating, and we will know more maybe in the 18Z run. Remember, this is run four times a day, and especially overnight tonight, once a full set of data, and everything can be in there as it is, should be properly, we get a good initialization, maybe the models will come back. Not that we're wanting it, but it's like if it's going to happen, then doggone it, we want people to be able to believe in the guidance so that they can put faith in preparing. They know what to prepare for, not this waffling. And again, since we all know we can see it, we all look for it, you got to understand it. And that's what I want to try to help you do. Because I saw it and I was like, what? What's the reason behind this? And I've been very busy today getting stuff ready. I'm supposed to leave on Monday morning. And I, am I going to be leaving for a 1004 millibar tropical storm in the Big Bend? And that would bring impacts, no doubt. But that's a big difference between you know that and a 980 hurricane, 980 millibars. So let's look at the H wharf. This model is not a global model. It is a hurricane specific model. It is H wharf is hurricane WRF weather research forecast model. Millions of dollars have been put into this. Thousands and thousands of man hours of programming and research and development. This model is supposed to handle tropical cyclones. Now that we have one in the model field, it is developed. It's not uh, supposedly going to happen. It's not an invest that the model takes and blows up into something, you know, making a mountain out of a molehill, as they say. We know we have a vortex down there, a circulation. So what does the H wharf say? And again, it is based off of the background fields of the GFS. So there's that, which is interesting. And you'll see when I show you. So this is the same time frame, H wharf model 12Z, and this is kind of a simulated composite reflectivity if it looked at like it was on radar. Think of it that way. So this is much better in terms of the initialization and going forward. 18Z Friday, again, 35 minutes past that time frame right there. It is 22, I'm sorry, 1835 uh, Zulu time, 2.36 p.m., Whatever, you get the idea, and it's 998 according to the H wharf. Closer than the GFS, but still off by about 7 millibars. In reality, ELSA is a little bit stronger. So let's move it on out and see what happens. So this is this evening, tonight through tomorrow. Let's go to tomorrow morning. So there it is, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Pressure down to about 987. It shows it strengthening. The GFS does not. Go on out further. This is um, 36, 48 hours right there. Not far off the tip of Jamaica, and the pressure, it's hard for me to even read it there. Looks like it's about 969. <laughs> Too many reds going on in there. And that is the shape of an intense hurricane right there. The model really seeing it. And, you know, that is a huge difference in what the GFS shows. Moving on out into time further. 72 hours coming up here, goes over Cuba, or close to Cuba, at 954. That's probably a major hurricane in the model. Finally, it goes across Cuba, weakens, as you would expect, picks up steam again uh, ever so slightly by day four, back down to about 987, and then eventually comes up into the eastern Gulf. Same general idea, a big bend threat, but considerably stronger than 1004 millibars that the counterpart GFS was showing there, the global model. So does the H wharf have the handle on this overall because it's more suited? We will find out. This is what makes this very intriguing 
But at the same time, it does make it difficult since a lot of us can see this. I know I'm saying it again. We have to understand exactly what we're looking at. So there you go. It comes on in after about day five, somewhere in the big bend, according to the H wharf. Um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how that pans out. Very interesting times. All right. So that's about all I have. I mean, we don't know. We've got to wait and see for the next suite of models. So let me just point you in the direction of the different uh, ways to connect and follow to what we're doing. Twitter, pretty prevalent there. CJ keeps up with our stuff on Facebook. Thank you, CJ. I'm on YouTube, of course, and uh, Kari produces a lot of the background images. Thank you, Kari, and Tim as well. And then, of course, the website is Hurricane Track. And a huge shout-out to our over 600 supporters on Patreon. Patreon is a website and an app that allows you to connect with the people that you know, help you understand stuff from music to movies, animation, poetry, blogging, podcasts, and weather. And so we are supported through Patreon at patreon.com slash hurricane track. You get access to our interactive tracking map, exclusive updates, and of course our live field coverage. Nothing else like it out there, not even on television. And if you don't believe me, give it a shot and you'll see what I'm talking about. And you know, 600 and something people I think they have a pretty good trust in what we're doing, and I appreciate that very much. Um, so I will continue to watch. I will continue to get stuff ready, even though it's pouring rain outside my window. i got to load up my rental truck over the next day or so. And my plan is to get out of here Monday morning, head down to Florida, and just assess the situation. I don't know where I'm going to end up. You know, It could be the Panhandle. It could be along the West Coast proper. We'll all just have to wait and see together. All right. As always, thank you for trusting me and putting your time and effort into waiting for these videos, watching them, sharing them, and all that good stuff. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new to watching on YouTube. Share the video with your friends and family across your social media. That helps us to grow, and we can do this even more. All right. Have a great rest of your Friday afternoon. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with you throughout the weekend with more on Hurricane Elsa.